So my guy is Horace Mann. Um, just my thesis first, Horace Mann was pivotal in creating and managing the creation of the United States' first public school system. Uh, despite the controversy surrounding some of his work in the 1800s, uh, his ideas and concepts hold true to this day. The common school movement, uh, teacher education, and his six principles of education have left a massive impact on the country, and the education system we have in place today would not have been possible without Horace Mann. Uh, so a couple of his major contributions to the USA, um, the common school movement, which uh, now we would just call the public school system. Um, essentially, that's just uh, his reform of uh, taking it from what it was in the early 1800s to uh, pretty close to what it is now today. Obviously, then it was more like schoolhouses and uh, pretty small schools. I have a picture of that later in the presentation. And But basically, uh, when he became the first secretary of the Massachusetts Board of Education, uh, he took control of it himself and uh, improved it. Um, <clears throat> another one of his major contributions was uh, professional teaching and training. Um, so essentially he just uh, also created, he uh, improved the education for the children, but he also improved the education for the teachers, which in turn improved the education for the children, um, which is uh, still a philosophy to this day with like stuff like professional development days and uh, like teacher conferences and um, all just education in general. Um, also, um, like uh, Mr. Lowell, he was one of the first guys to introduce women into his profession, which was pretty, pretty uh, innovative at the time. People weren't really letting women uh, take uh, many jobs aside from uh, choice few. Uh, he, he recognized that um, they should be uh, allowed to do what they want, and he recognized that in the teaching profession and uh, he let them take those classes that he was introducing as well with teaching. Uh, finally, his, uh, another one of his major contributions was the six uh, principles of education, which was just a couple things, main points of his philosophy on education and uh, schooling in general, uh, which I'll go into detail on later. This picture is a quote from him, a human being is not attaining his full heights until he's educated, which is just like, essentially that's like his philosophy too. Uh, education is key to um, like reaching your full potential. Um, so the common school movement, he was the he was appointed the first secretary secretary of the board of education in Massachusetts, and that's when he was in a position to start his uh, reforms of the uh, public public school system. Um, so right here, this is one of the schools. Uh, what a school looked like after he um, did the reforms. So you can see the teacher right here. And it's just like a little schoolhouse. It's nothing like what we have today. Um, but that was, um, that was a new concept for them then, uh, having like a small concentrated environment for learning. Um, he also started the Common School Journal for uh, teachers and students, um, which was basically just like a magazine about uh, education in general and like strategies for learning, for like helping teachers and helping kids uh, study or teach, uh, respectively. Uh, finally, he was appointed the president of, uh, after, sorry, after serving in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1848 to 1853, 1853 he served as the president of the college that he founded, uh, Antioch College. Um, another quote from him, he said at a uh, commencement speech uh, before his death, I beseech you to treasure up in your hearts these, my, par my parting words, be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity, and for him that victory was uh, this like movement for uh, education in the public school and for uh, the general population. So this uh, hit one of his other contributions, prof pro uh, professional teaching and training. He started uh, teacher training schools, which now would just be like teaching programs at uh, colleges, but it was uh, separate things when he created them. Uh, he it's called, he essentially professionalized teaching. So instead of uh, just being like something that you just kind of like end up as a teacher, if you don't have, an, have any other like resources or jobs available to you, you just kind of start to be a teacher. Um, he, he made it so you have to like work at it and study to become a teacher so that um, the kids that are in your class are getting the best education possible. Um, he also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, he recognized women in teaching. Uh, which was especially innovative at the time because aside from like guys like Lowell that were um, 
letting women work at uh, his um, mills, then there wasn't much available to them in terms of like work. Um, so that was uh, a special opportunity for them at the time. And now his six principles of uh, education. His first one, I, I did like little short notes on each of them right here. Ignorance versus freedom. Uh, citizens cannot maintain both ignorance and freedom. So that's essentially just saying if you're free, then you have to be intelligent about it. Um, his second one is that this education should be paid for, controlled, and, and maintained by the public, which is uh, mainly in reference to taxes and uh, having having input about the education if you are paying for it. Uh, three, this education should be provided in schools that embrace children from varying backgrounds. Uh, diversity, which is uh, at the forefront of uh, many people's minds, especially in school today. Uh, this education must be non-sectarian, um, which means non-religious, which there's uh, schools that are religious, so that's kind of fallen not really a thing anymore, but uh, five, this education must be taught using tenets of a free society, um, which is also kind of like the first one. You have to be focused on freedom at the same time and uh, being on, be using that freedom intelligently. Uh, six, this education must be provided by well-trained professional teachers, um, which is one of the things that he created and started. Uh, educating teachers properly to educate the students, the young students properly. Um, his, a couple of his ideas like uh, non-sectarianism at the time, going to school without religion behind it. Um, a lot of people didn't like that, so that sparked some controversy. Uh, diversity was another big one that they didn't like uh, back then. And now for his lasting impact, uh, primarily his principles. I noticed some uh, parallels between his principles and the core values of Worcester Academy, like honor, respect, community, personal growth, and challenge. A lot of hit, uh, he had the a lot of the same ideas, especially diversity, um, professional development days in uh, public schools and private schools was another. It's still to this day teachers are trying to improve and like be their uh, be the, as be the best they can be at teaching and staying like up to date with new programs or technologies to uh, give the best resources to their students. And finally, he's just a little, he's left his mark on uh, schools and uh, companies uh, around. Close to here, there's a Horace Mann School for the Deaf. And uh, most famously, there's a Horace Mann School in New York that's well known to be like one of the best uh, private schools in the country. So kind of continuing his legacy of uh, education and yeah. All right. Thank you.